Hello and welcome once again to the Hilton Hotel here in Blackpool for the 888.com World Pool Championships. We're at the quarter-final stages of this year's £25,000 event and already we've had plenty of action and drama. I'm delighted to say joining me for this match is England team captain Lee Kendall. Lee, good to see you, but you'd obviously rather be out there, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's a lovely arena. I'd like to be out there, but uh, it's not to be, I'm afraid. What happened? Brian, who's playing this match, Brian Alco, beat me 8-3 in the last 32. Played very well against me. Holcrow up against Superville next. Who do you think is going to win it? Uh, I hope Brian will uh, put a good performance in because he's a bit of a south, he's a bit Craig Reynolds, so he's had a tough draw, so I'd like him to go on and he is a good friend as well. Absolutely. Well, I said plenty of action and drama. Let's just recap on what's happened in the tournament so far. The top half of the draw. Well, Mick Hill came through against Yannick Bofis very comfortably indeed, 9-3. And then we saw an incredible match. Jason Twist up against Carl Morris. A re-rack in the deciding frame. Twist winning it 9-8. At the very bottom of the draw there you see England versus Australia. Appleton up against Quinton Ham, but we're going to concentrate on Superville up against Brian Holcrow. And uh, Superville, he's been probably the man of the tournament so far. Yes, he's been in the French team for a long time and uh, he's uh, He's a great player and it's his first TV performance, so uh, hopefully it'll be a good one. Nobody looks as though they've tested him so far. Is that the no, case? No, he's, he's had a good, uh, a good path and uh, I mean, he's had a good draw so far, but uh, this is his big match now. It is a big match on television up against Holcrow. Holcrow said to me before this match about 10 minutes ago he was absolutely buzzing. He, th he thinks he's on top of his game. Would you agree with that? Yeah, he's playing very well, very strong. He's very strong tactically and he's a, he's a great finisher and his nickname is the buzzer so uh. <laughs> very apt indeed he's desperate for a win the last time he played on television he lost 8-1 he wants to put that right today Alan Hughes is in the arena ready to introduce the players let's join him thank you Mark and we welcome a player making his first ever world uh, quarterfinal appearance and one of the most popular players in the modern day game his opponent the second Frenchman to reach this year's quarterfinal and he's a former European finalist himself Will you welcome together Brian Buzzer Halcrow and Cedric Superville? Welcome back to Blackpool for this year's 888.com World Pool Championships. We're down to our third quarter final, and this promises to be a very interesting affair indeed. Brian Halcrow, there you see the young Geordie lad, and he's going to be up against. The young Frenchman Cedric Superville. Well, he's going to be Halcrow to break off in the first frame. Best of 17s is a race to nine. And Halcrow did not get into the balls there. And it's a pleasure to be joined in the commentary box by the Red world champion spotted. himself. He's not going to be able to keep hold of his crown. And Chris Melling. How do you see this turning out? Well, I think it's going to be an interesting encounter. Two new players to the quarter-final stage. Just depends who handles the pressure best, really. Well, Brian Halcrow. Very good break from him. Red Bulls in play. Played very well in this year's championships to reach the last eight. And he's one of the best players in the pro ranks. He's a good friend of mine, actually. Brian. Very nice and assuming lad. He's going to just try to develop his Yellow reds. balls in play. Also in the commentary box with me. Uh, welcome back again, Eddie Barker. And Eddie, you've had a good few matches against Brian Halcrow, haven't you? Brian Halcrow is an excellent player. He's a very, very cagey kind of player. He doesn't always go for it, as you've seen from his first shot there today. And you'll probably see quite a tactical affair. I haven't seen a lot of Cedric play, but I've heard he can be quite tactical too. So it should be an interesting game to watch. Well, Cedric Superville. One of the steady French players. Their team has been very good this year. As it is every year. He's a very close friend of uh, Yannick Bofis. Who we saw in the first quarter final. He was beaten 9-3 by Mick Hill. But Superville. He's going to fancy his chances. First time he's made it to the televised stages as, as an individual. In bright yellow. And you did say that he doesn't mind the tactical affairs of Superville. He doesn't want that to go in, but unfortunately for Superville, it's gone. <coughs> he has landed on the two yellows, I believe. I think it's 
see they both go into the bottom left hand corner he's definitely eyeing up the clearance here Tony he just drops this yellow tops the white through a few inches he's on the, the yellow next to it into the centre pocket then they're all there for the taking well Chris I know you wouldn't be playing any safeties from these sort of positions so he's just got to top this one through get on the ball in the middle and everything's easy isn't it well I think he's got one awkward ball he can pop the yellow in the left hand corner but I think he's a little bit worried about the other yellow it's not too easy to get position on that but he's played a great shot there he's absolutely perfect in the centre bag well it was a good shot from Superville and he'd so love to wrap this frame up at this visit to try and settle his nerves. We'll have another look at that shot, the way he just danced the cue ball around the back of the red and out for the yellow in the centre. And you see a great view of the arena. These two are playing in. 30 seconds. Yeah, the timekeeper called the 30 seconds. You might hear that a few times in this match. Another good shot from Cedric. Not faced by the table at all. Those middle bags have proved quite tough for people playing at pace in them. In Superville, he wasn't shy with it. And Brian Halcrow could be regretting the safety shot he tried to play. <coughs> if anything, you think Superville was going to be the more defensive, but probably caught Brian Halker off guard. See, Brian won't know a lot about Superville. Superville doesn't play over here in the in our professional ranks. And you see Brian looking on. And I know a few people, he, he, he was asking about what sort of game does Superville play, and everybody has said to him he's very defensive, so... Quite seconds. taken aback by the approach from the Frenchman. Well, at the minute, the best form of defence is attack at the minute for Cedric. Clearing the balls up. Very impressed by his first t TV debut. Doesn't look fazed by the cameras and the lights. Well, I remember a few years ago when Yannick Berfice first reached the televised stage and everybody said he'd freeze. <coughs> well, he got to the final. And Superville is now the only Frenchman left in it. He'll be wanting to do the same. And that's a very good shot from Superville. And he's got this black ball now into this bottom right hand corner to announce his arrival in these World Championships. And what happened there? He had a massive snatch there with the arm. And Chris, that was pure nerves, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we'll see if Cedric dropped his arm there on the shot. Up very quickly off the queue. Sign of early nerves. Halcrow very quick to play the safety. Superville Total snooker. Still get to the black off the right-hand side rail and into the eight. That's the easiest par through. Well, if there's anyone you don't want to be against in this position, it's Brian Halcrow. He's probably got one of the best tactical brains in the game today. And there you see the predicament for Cedric Superville. Just looking at this right hand cushion. 30 seconds. You just heard the 30 seconds in. If he hits this black, there could be a chance to go in and off on the white. If he hits it half ball either side, where's the cue ball gone? Very good call, foul. Eddie Barker. Two visits. Time running. Now you see he's gone in off and given the foul away to Halcrow. Well, if you miss one ball against Halcrow, you're very lucky if you see the table again. He just keeps you away from the table, snookers you to death, gets two visits, and then clears the balls up. Well, he's nicknamed the buzzer. called his pool club in Newcastle buzzers is that because whenever you ask him how he's played he says I'm buzzing lad he's still got his visit in hand and if 
Brian clears these if Brian clears these balls up now, he'll be buzzing more than a swarm of bees around a honeypot. Well, I did notice before Brian went out into the arena, on his cuffs and his shirt, he's got the names of his two sons, Jordan and Joel. There you see Joel on his left sleeve. That's his newborn. Jordan's his eldest one. He's a great family man, is, is Brian Halcrow, but he's going to be happy here. He's just got to pop this red in the corner, drag the keyboard back about seven or eight inches. You see the first miss, he's got the cue ball a long way down the table Second as well, and all of a sudden this has now become tricky. Well, these tables are quite generous, but if you don't set the ball off in the right direction at pace, they tend to bobble. Now he's played a nice shot there on that red, and he left himself the straight black in the bottom left-hand corner. And the black's down, and Hal Crow has his frame. dream start. He wanted an early frame, and he's got it. He leads Superville by one frame to nil. Superville breaking off in frame two. Foul. Kubel's gone one in the visit. pocket. Open table. And straight away, Hal Crow's coming straight to the table. We'll have another look at Superville's break straight in the middle pocket. Now, Chris, when you're breaking, I mean, when you won the world title last year, a lot of it was down to your breaks. They were huge, and you always managed to control the cue ball. Just keep out of that middle pocket. You've got to put a little bit, bit more bottom on the white, haven't you? Yeah, I tend to break from the side of the table, hitting the white just below the middle. And all you can ask for is control on the white ball, hitting the balls as hard as you can. Yellow balls Sometimes they don't go in, but more than often they do. He's only got one visit, Hal Crow. As you know, in World Rules Pull, in off the break is only one visit to your opponent. And he's already made this clearance a little bit more difficult by nudging that yellow towards the red. And there, Hal Crow playing the safety. Red ball's in play. He has left a gap there into that corner pocket. Well, that to me shows a sign of nerves. Brian does play the tactics, but really there's only one bad yellow on the table. It did go in the left-hand corner pocket. Well, I spoke to Brian Halcrow just prior to this match, and he said at every opportunity, he said he's going to attack. Well, Brian, you're telling me lies. Superville's got an opportunity here if he wishes to take it. He's looking at the angle now. If he can pop the red in the bottom right-hand pocket, he can split the yellow and the red on the left-hand side. That'll leave game on for Superville. And a tremendous shot there from Superville. to attempt this cut with this red up into the top right hand corner he tried to cut the red back in the middle I don't think that was on I think that cut was absolutely impossible he, he hit it almost as fine as he possibly could and it still didn't go in well I think he's a little bit disappointed with the last frame missing a simple black like that every shot you seem to take after that looks a difficult shot Pot there from Halcrow, and this yellow must slide past the red into the left hand centre. If it does, you're going to see Halcrow. There, you see the yellow will go in, it'll go side door off the jaw. Wants to play this very gently. Played that shot very well indeed, Halcrow. Now he has a great chance. The only problem here for Halcrow, bit of yellow ball that's just to the right of the black, but we know it will go into that left-hand centre. And you feel he's going to get on it on this shot. 
and he's not got the cue ball up fi far enough. Really surprised at Brown there. Two shots ago, he could have played the yellow in the corner bag and kissed the red that he is behind now. And there you see if he's going to make that ball into the centre, he's going to have to swerve the white round. Probably going to have to adjust and play the yellow in the corner instead. Why are you thinking of the bend? 30 seconds. Unless he's playing it off the black ball. Oh, what a great shot from Halcrow. And just look at the result of that as well. Well, that was a brilliant shot. Got himself right back in it and another good shot. Perfect on the black now for Halcrow. Down goes the black and right. the dream start continues. Halcrow now leads Superville by two frames to nil. Third frame, Brian Halcrow to break. He's chalked up the first two to no reply. And where's the cue ball going? Foul. How on earth did that go down there? One visit, open table. Unbelievable. Time running. We watched you coming down the table, and I know, so I looked at you, Chris, and you don't think there's room past the yellow for the cue ball. You think you can't go past that yellow. I mean, it didn't touch it, did it? Well, I don't know how the white sneaked past that yellow ball there. Didn't think it was possible. Cedric's got another great chance here. Only one visit because Brown went off the break. He's gone a little yellow bit too far play. there. He just wanted the angle to develop his bad yellow on the right hand side of the table. Well, the bad yellow that Chris is talking about is situated behind two reds on the right hand side of the table there. Now we just want to get an angle on one of the yellows, just a nudge that into open play and then the finish will be available for him Cedric really needs to play well in this frame he's had good opportunities in the first two frames but he still finds himself 2-0 behind he'll be very nervous if he doesn't get a frame on the board soon well he attacked it now will that yellow pass into the bottom right hand corner it looks very close to that red if that goes in the finish is available you see Cedric Superville shaking his head I know those yellows go there, they're easy, they're the easy ones. It's next to that red, stuck together on the right hand side of the table. Superville just come around to have a little inspection of it. Oh, I don't think that goes. It'll go into the rail, but I think it's going to have to have another go at moving it. Well, I'll tell you what, he played the plant and completely took his eye off it. He doesn't know how he's missed that one. Superville is starting to look very nervous indeed. Well, I think it's all developed from the black he missed in the first frame. If he'd have potted that, you'd have probably seen a different person at the table. But that has totally knocked his confidence. Very right, Chris. It does have a knock-on effect. Could see another example of Brian Halcrow's tactical play here, just knocking the red off the cushion and the white and behind the other red. Oh, very good snooker there from Halcrow. He's rubbing salt into Superville's wounds. Total snooker. Well, I spoke to Brian before the match and Brian said to me, can you give me any tips on what I should do? And all I could say to him was, break well and don't miss. That's easy for you to say, Chris. But poor old Cedric Superville. He's presented with a very hard task of trying to get out of this snooker. I'm not sure he'll attempt it. He's gone for it and that's a brilliant shot. Oh, he's unlucky. Oh. I just thought he was going to bump into yellow then. He's just scraped Two into visits. the corner pocket. Time running. As they say in France, say la vie. Well, oh, poor old Superville. It's going from bad to worse for him. As myself and Chris Mellon get French lessons from Eddie Barker. 
Will Brown's played a poor shot there. First shot tried to land on his two dodgy reds at the top of the table. But he does, does have two visits and can afford to make one mistake. Nice pot there from Halcrope. Well, he really wants to move that red sooner rather than later, unless it probably sneaks past that yellow. We remember the cue ball going in there off the break, Chris, don't we? And I reckon that red will go past yellow in the bottom left-hand corner. Well, it just all depends, really, because the white ball is smaller than the object balls, so it could sneak past. Well, the white ball went in there cleanly. If the red doesn't go in clean, I'm sure it'll go off cushion and off ball and in. And Halcrow is just growing with confidence. And he's speeded right up now. He still has the, has the visit in hand. And this red, there you see, cleanly it will go in the pocket. Even hit the thick part of the yellow, he's still got it. He's not going to worry on this black ball. He's going to play slowly up the table to the right-hand top corner. Should he leave this over the bag, he'll have another go. Second visit. He'll be happy with that, the easy eight. And it's another one for Halcro. 3-0 now, the new Frame. man leads against his opponent from France. <laughs> Superville going to be breaking off now in frame six. I mean, you just feel he needs this frame now. If he loses this one, I think he's waving goodbye. Well, I don't think he deserved to pot a ball off the break there, Tony. He hardly broke the balls at all. The problem now that Superville's got is damage limitation. He could, this match actually could end, end up being embarrassing. And there you see Superville's break again. And it's just nothing is going right for, for the young man from France. The TV cameras and the eight-foot table have found him out somewhat. He had a couple of chances early on and made serious mistakes. He should have won the first frame. Missed a silly black. Red ball's in play. Got a bad enough as well. And Halcro, who did look edgy at the start, is now growing in confidence. And this could end up being a cruise for him. But I mean, Chris, you know, when, when you've been in positions where you've been four and five nil down, I know you were this year's World Championships. You were four nil down or three nil down against Stephen Munro. <coughs> and what goes through your mind, you know? How, how do you get back into a match like this? Well, basically, like Lee said in the studio, you can only take one frame at a time. But the way I try to do it, I try to play fast, get the fr get the frames back fast, and that puts pressure back on your opponents. And Eddie Barker, you normally find yourself in these sort of deficits, so you should be used to these. How do you get back into them? Well, thanks for that, Tony. It's difficult. It, it all depends on your frame of mind and how the frames before have gone. If if the player you're playing is playing absolutely brilliant and you haven't had a chance, then you can't go beating yourself up about it. But when you've had chances and you've wasted them, it's very difficult to control your emotions. Yeah, exactly right, Eddie. Superville had his chances early, and it was Superville that gave Halcro the confidence. And look at the positional shot he's just played there. He's going to pop this red into his bottom right-hand corner. He's going to screw the cue ball back a little bit. And the way this is going, it's just one frame leads to another for Halcrow. Well, he's got the white ball on a, on a string at the minute, Tony. Absolutely perfect. Every single shot is perfect position. Left with this simple eight ball into the bottom left-hand corner. And this is awesome from Halcrow. He now strides into a 6-0 lead against a young Frenchman. Ryan Halcrow to break, leading six frames to nil. Well, worse to come maybe for Superville, it's Halcrow breaking off now in frame seven. He's been making balls consistently off the break, and again, Halcrow's had a good break. This Red time yellows possible. look older today simply because the top right-hand corner's covered up by yellow. Doesn't get right down on his cue off his break shots, Halcrow. Stands very upright, but he still gets enough power into them to make a ball. Well, for a small fellow like Brian, 
He does hit the balls very hard. Yellow balls nominated. And there you see he's nominated yellows. Has to pot one to be on them. The way he's playing at the moment, that's not going to cause him any problems. Yellow balls in play. Might see how Crodius take his time on manoeuvring these yellows. That yellow at the top right hand corner doesn't go cleanly into that pocket. And he's very quick just to try and nudge it over the bag and bring it out into open play. Red balls in play. Well, he's, he's done that, but he has left a gap there, and he's also left Superville on the other awkward red. The only danger here for Halcro is that he can take this too lightly now because of his big lead. And maybe you just get a bit complacent. Well, I don't think Brian's the sort of player that will do that, Tony, but Superville being 6-0 down, he's got to start really going for it. And this has got to be classed as an opportunity if he wants to get back in the match. There's a tough red next to the black, but he's got to start taking these out. But again, straight away there, Eddie. Another pole positional shot from his first ball, bridging over the red. On this eight-foot pool table, it's not an easy shot to get position off. Well, when you're this far behind and nothing's going for you, the pot's become a lot harder. Superville using his brain. Clever shot, he's just covering up. He knew he wasn't going to get a finish there. I think we may see a deliberate foul coming here. Yellow onto the red, clearing the pocket and not leaving Cedric an easy first shot. Well, I'm not sure this is a good game plan for Cedric. Fair enough, he has missed a few chances, but Brian is one of the better tactical players at pool. Well, how crow there just dislodging that red from that corner pocket by shunting the yellow into it. Well, Superville there just trying to contain Brian Halcrow, but it's not going to work. So all he's doing is knocking his own reds into safe positions. Well, I think he's developed the black and the yellow. They both go now. So he, Brian's only got one ra hard ball, and that's ye the yellow in the centre of the table between the two reds. Going upstairs for this yellow. I think you might just see how Crow now maybe play that yellow on the right hand side cushion and just dribble it down over the bottom corner. And the way you're looking at me, Chris, you don't believe that's the shot he's going to play, do you? Well, look at it now. I think he can pot the yellow in the bottom left hand corner, and I think the yellow that is dodgy goes in the centre pocket. Well, he's listening to you, Chris. And who am I to try and second guess a man that's still in a tournament? Be interesting to see if the black goes in the bottom right hand corner pocket. Well, I think the way he's playing this clearance, I think it does go. He's absolutely perfect. Even though he's bridging over the ball, he is perfect. Uh, just a bit of awkward queuing over here into this bottom right hand corner and that's not going in we did try to pot that one I don't think the alarm bells will be ringing just yet we'll have another look at this miss yellow from Halcro wasn't tried to cover the bag, the finish was there Well, you just feel Cedric has to clear up at this visit. It's not easy to get a snooker. And if Brian does get a shot of a yellow, then he'll probably clear the table. Well, Superville has got the red in front of the yellow. That's all he can do is to try and keep plugging away. Have a look at Cedric's safety shot here. 
plonked it right in front of his yellow. But Hal Crow will be trying to put his other yellow in front of that. We've not achieved that properly, but it, there is a plant there now with the two yellows. So Cedric is going to have to do something. There you see, yellow onto yellow will go. I think we'll see Cedric double the red below the black, straight across to the cluster of balls on the left hand side, knocking the white up the table and trying to leave it behind the other two reds. He's just having a look now, Cedric. 30 seconds. He walks around the table. Played that shot, Chris, and he's played it very well. In oh, unlucky Cedric! He tried to cover the pocket, and it just fell in at the last. I'm going to see it once again. I just thought it was going to hang there as it hit the jaws, but it dropped in for Cedric, and everything that can go wrong is going wrong. Well, that was unfortunate for Cedric, that red ball dropping in, but I think now it has done. He should take the ball by the horns, pop this red in the centre pocket, screw down off the bottom cushion into the cluster, split them out and go for the game. That's why Cedric's going to play the little snooker. Just roll behind this red. In fact, I thought just for a second he hit it too hard. Time out. No way Cedric is going to attack there. It's too risky, well, especially he's a very defensive player. I think it's 6 0 down. You're not going to win the game by snookering, especially not against the player of Brian's standard. He could easily go off the top cushion, hit these yellows, or even just play straight. He could even pot this yellow. That's exactly what he's going to do. Well, he's definitely hit the yellows, so what's he going to do? What a great shot there. Good spot, Eddie. He's just going to have to pot this yellow over the right hand corner. A little bit of side and just drag the cue ball into the middle of the table. And is that going to go behind the red? He's been very fortunate indeed, Brian Halcrow. If that had been Superville, that would have probably gone behind the red. That's the way the match has gone. Great position there on the black. Straight into the corner. And down it goes again, and Halcro marches on. There's no stopping this man. He now leads Cedric Superville by seven frames to nil. Frame number eight, Superville now. He's not thinking about winning the match, I don't think. He's thinking about, please let me win a frame. Well, he's made a ball off the Red break. Potted. And you've got a feel for the young man from France. We all want him to get one off the get one on the board now. He has had a bit of bad luck. A couple of misses, but also you can't take anything away from Brian Halcrow. He has been superb. We'll have another look at Cedric's break. And it's a good steady break. Made the red in the middle. Yellow ball's nominated. Thirty seconds. He's opting for the yellows, Chris. And would that have been your ball of choice? Yes, I think I'd have nominated yellows there simply because they're all in the open. They all go in most pockets. Now he has to take this chance because they don't come any easier than this. And you just feel if he doesn't take this chance then it's good night. Well, as you said earlier, Chris, that missed black in the first frame was all important when he was only 3 nil down. He's now 7 nil down. And what, wouldn't it have been a different match if he'd have potted that black? Well, the same match is turned on one frame. And I think that could be the frame. The early frames are very important in matches like this. Well, it's a race to nine. And Superville is 7 nil down he needs 
against these yellows and the black try and kick start something for himself well we saw Mikkel earlier in the week defeat Yannick Bafis by nine frames to three can Brian defeat the other Frenchman nine nil let's hope not let's hope Cedric gets a frame on the board but as things stand it's not looking too clever He's left this slightly awkward, Chris. It's not too easy to get on the next yellow for me. Eh? Unless the yellow in the centre of the table passes. It may just pass the yellow near the pocket. Well, he's going to be playing the yellow down into the bottom right hand corner now. Just want to stop the white dead. Give himself an angle to get out for the last one. It's above those two reds as we look. Well, I think the yellow that is above the two reds actually passed the black ball into the left-hand corner, but I don't think Cedric's looked at it. <coughs> now you see, he's probably got half a pocket there. He could maybe dribble that through, but he's going to have to now play to get on the yellow into the right-hand centre. I think we'll be seeing Cedric try and kiss the red ball here, but in kissing the red, it goes over towards the black and could cause more problems well, he's played a good shot now he's simply just got to roll this into the right hand centre the cue ball naturally goes up the table and past the two reds and it will leave him a cut with the black and he's just looking now to where he's going to be playing the black ball should he pot this yellow and down he goes Cedric Superville He's made the yellow, Foul. and he screwed the cue ball in the middle pocket. All he had to do was roll it. I don't know why he wanted to put the bottom on the cue ball there, Chris. Well, there's no excuse for that. He's 7-0 down, and there is no excuse for going off in the middle pocket. He's a French international player. Fair enough, it is his TV debut, but there is no excuse for that shot. Well, Superville, you have to say, he's come out in his quarter-final and he's froze yeah I'm really feeling for Cedric at the moment Tony it's like being in a lion's den out there under the television lights for the first time big crowd watching and he's up against an opponent and Brian Alco he's on fire well I think we have to say in my opinion this is the best match in the world championship so far best performance Well, Superville has presented him with a few gifts, Hal Crow. They won't be calling him Superville, they'll be calling him Super Claus. And there comes Brian Hal Crow. And everything is pretty simple once again from the man from Newcastle. He's got this long red into the corner. I don't think this is going to pose him any problems. And what on earth has happened there? But just watch where it lands, Tony. And that says it all. Second visit. Yeah, he's been lucky there with the second visit coming to help him. I don't know, must have been just complacency from Halcro there with that first miss. He's not going to make the same mistake again, but he's been very fortunate where the red came back, Chris, as you said. This black for 8 0. Down it goes, and Halcrow's one away right. from the semis. He leads Superville 8 frames to 0. Well, here we are. A race to 9, and Halcrow has already racked up the first 8. And he's breaking off incredibly to win the match at this early stage. We just hopefully Superville can get to the table and, and score one on the, his side of the scoreboard before the end of this match. He's going to be trying a bit of damage limitation, but it's Halcrow to break off. And he's made a ball off the break. Yellow ball's potted. But there's a nice little cluster in the middle of the table surrounding the black ball. <laughs> So whichever colour he chooses, he's still going to have some work to do to run out from here. 
Red Bull's nominated. Yeah, Brian's chosen the Red Bulls. He's got an easy starter. Be hoping to take this out 9-0. Brian's one of the nicest guys you'll meet on the circuit. But he won't be wanting to give Cedric any frames at all in this match. Well, I think we'll be seeing Brian take Red Bulls here. Putting the one in the top pocket. And then running round for the one on the side cushion like that. Red Bulls in play. Look at the spin that he put on the cue ball there. Punched a white with a lot of top and side off the rail. Span it over to that red. And let's have another look at this. See him power the ball with top spin. It checks backwards and then goes back the other way. Great shot there from Halcrow. He's pretty much in exhibition mode now, Halcrow. Just requires one frame. Out of a possible nine that would be left. Well, he's left himself in a perfect position there to split his awkward ball out if he wants to. Pots the red in the centre pocket, screws the white down the centre of the table, flicks the red. He's just got to be careful that the white ball doesn't slide into the right hand corner pocket. Well, I think he's going to play the red down here. If he just rolls through here, he's going to have an angle on the red into the bottom right hand corner, kick into black and red, but no. Refuse that option as well. He's done us both in, Chris. Well, I'm just wondering whether the red might go in the bottom left-hand corner. <coughs> well, I don't think he'll be going through that gap. Maybe moving towards the red in the centre pocket. Well, I think Brian might pop the red in the centre pocket. Screw down, land low on the red in the corner. But there we can see the red does actually pass into the left hand corner pocket. Goes in corner and middle. I think we're going to see him play it now. He's on it, it will go in that bottom corner as you said Chris. But well no. the way that Brian's been the way that Brian's been playing in this match, I can't see him going wrong from here. Looks like he'll be shaking hands with Cedric Superville shortly and saying au revoir. Well he just made it a little bit harder as Cedric Plonk firmly in his seat as he has been throughout this match. He's going to have to play this red now that's just above the yellow and the black into this bottom corner. But he's also got to guide the cue ball. Ideally, like to kiss that yellow that's furthest up the table. If he hits that, he'll be on the red in the centre pocket. Important to control the cue ball here. If he hits this too hard, he's played it well. Ooh. And he's gone just far enough, I think. To cut this red in the middle. Well, that tells you the story of this match. When Halcrow has bumped into a ball, they've run kindly for him, whereas Superville early on, same sort of shots. And it was all going wrong for the Frenchman. Well, I'm not sure if Brian can drop the red in the centre pocket and hold for the black. I think he might be trying to kiss the yellow. That'll send the black towards the left hand corner pocket. Well, he's going to be left a shot. He's on the black now for the first ever whitewash in a World Championship televised match. And there's Brian Halcrow's family watching him. This black for a place in the semi-finals. And in it goes and Halcrow has whitewashed Cedric Superville. Nine frames to nil and he gets his berth in the semi-finals. Brian Holcrow has just created a small piece of eight ball history, becoming the first man ever to whitewash his opponent in the televised stages of the World Championships. Lee, impressed? Yeah, he played very well. It was a nervous start by both players, but uh, Brian settled down very well and the scoreline uh, was probably the right scoreline. That's, that's harsh, 9-0, that's, that's a big scoreline. It's a big scoreline, but I mean, he did play well and Cedric made a lot of mistakes and uh, it, Brian settled and he, he'll be very happy with that performance. I mean, how much help did Superville give Brian? Did, I mean, on that form, would Brian win the World Championships? He wouldn't win the, uh, the tournament on, on that performance, but you can only do what's presented to you. He took most of his chances and uh, a convincing winner. Absolutely. Well, he's through to the, uh, the semi-finals. Uh, let's just take a look at how the semi-finals are set in the shape up the top half of the draw there. Mick Hill will take on the two-time world champion, Jason Twist. We've just seen Holcrow whitewash Superville 9-0. And in the bottom half of the draw, we've got Darren Appleton against 
Quinton Han. England up against Australia. A quick word on that one, Lee. Yeah, it's a close match to call. I mean, it's even money, really, whichever one you want to pick. Who are you going to pick? I know you're going to ask me that <laughs> question. Um, I'd like to say down, but I've got a sneaky feeling that Quinton's going to turn it on in that match. Yeah, it's going to be a very, very special occasion. That's in the next programme, but until then, from all of us here at the 888.com World Pool Championships, thanks for watching. Goodbye.